Well, hello everyone, how are we doing? And I hope you've been well. And we got another video, and we're looking at a strange mystery. Why did the early Christians draw fishes everywhere? And we're talking about Christians in Rome and in the Greek world. That's where. Why? And as I can, I can only conclude that um, Jesus was possibly seen uh, as a, a type of fish god, replacing earlier fish gods. And you're going to see why in a moment. You're going to say, Charles, that's ridiculous. My priest never told me this. Well, maybe a part of what he has told you uh, is only part of what has survived and the rest was removed, because that is the only way I can explain the presence of these fish, uh, fish, uh, this fish iconography that we see in Rome and in Greece. Where does it come from? And we're going to find out exactly, uh, I think, where it comes from, or partly where it comes from, a lost tradition in which there was a fish healing god who was seen as a sun god. And that would explain it, because nothing else does. And I did ask on Twitter, not on Twitter, on Facebook, I asked people, why do you think, why do you think there's a fish in early Christianity? And some people gave these answers. Um, I will make you fishes of men. Uh, Jesus was given grilled fish after being resurrected. He fed 5,000 with fish. Uh, parable of the drawing of the net. He compares the angels separating the righteous from the wicked at the end of the world to fishes sorting out their catch. Um, and there's all these fish stories in the New Testament, but there's no explanation as to Jesus' obsession with fish. Is it that he's just giving an anecdote to his disciples who happen to be fishermen? Um, to pay a two jack from a tax, uh, Christ tells Peter to go to the water, cast a line, and he and he finds some fish in the uh, some, uh, a coin in the fish's mouth. Also, Jesus says uh, at the end there will be a sign of Jonah, and no one knows what that means. Um, and they think, well, um, I guess someone gets swallowed by a fish. As Jonah was swallowed by a fish, what does it really mean? Is that what the sign of Jonah is? The fish, and honestly, none of these are satisfying, because if you're a Christian. Why draw a fish? Why not draw an oak tree? Why not uh, draw an acorn? Why not draw all these other things that Jesus was talking about? What's the deal with the fish? And this, none of these explain that. Someone else said, oh, maybe it's the age of Pisces. Well, the fact is, common people wouldn't be interested in the age of Pisces. Only the astrologers, some of them, would be interested in it. Certainly not enough of them to run around drawing fishes everywhere. I found another explanation on alcation.com. What does the fish signify? And this guy doesn't really know it either, in my my mind, but he does say, uh, Jesus, um, no, sorry, um, the, 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 the ichthys, ichthys was used as an acronym for Jesus Christus Theu Vios Soter, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Saviour. And yes, that's, that's interesting, but again, why the fish? Well, I can think of one reason. There is a cross in there, isn't there? It's, it's, it's a cross. But why the fish? Why the fish? What's going on? What? Why a fish? Well, firstly, um, certain things are. This is a pixie, a sea dragon, uh, a, a water dragon, Chinese pixie, similar to the sphinx, possibly. And um, it's, it's very interesting the pixie because what he does, um, he attracts wealth, and. Uh, what he does, he actually uh, brings gold in its mouth to its owner. Uh, I'll just prove that to you. Gold, um, when it returns to its master's house, the Bixi is then said to guard the riches, um, and it likes to bring their master's money in their mouth. So the, 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 the New Testament is picking up this much older story about this kind of sea dragon bringing money to you. So Jesus is actually commanding this thing to bring him wealth, this sea dragon. And the New Testament only says it as a fish, but it's actually this type of creature which is similar to the Sphinx, as we discussed in a previous video. Um, here we have a sarcophagus in um, uh, the east, um, basically the eastern Mediterranean, um, showing Jonah and the fish, and an anchor which looks a bit like a cross, a couple of fishes on the end. It looks like an early Christian symbol, doesn't it? Um, it's, a, it's, it's quite Hebrew. Um, in the baptism of Jesus, and now I'm going to show you what I, I've shown you the, the other explanations. Now I'm going to show you my explanation. I've been racking my brains, and this is what I've come up with, 
it's not a complete explanation, but this is what makes sense to me. So when we read about the baptism of Jesus, well, it's clear Jesus was seen as a fish god. When we read about the baptism of Jesus, um, Jesus came to John the Baptist while baptizing people in the River Jordan. John tried to make him change his mind, but Jesus answered, In this way, we will do all that God requires. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. So he is a water person. Heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And then the guy in heaven says, This is my own dear son with whom I am pleased. And he, this guy in heaven has to be his father. And for various reasons, we've explained in other videos that in the ancient European religion, a guy called Isis or Yissa or Isis was worshipped. And that was a man or it was a woman. It was both. And that was the father. So in England is a beautiful place um, called uh, Bath. And in Bath is the spring. And there is a god there called Sulis, uh, a mother goddess. And here you find cures, cures and, and water, water cures. And people since the ancient times would come here for a water cure. And it is water that cures. Until modern times, people in England, if they had something incurable, they'd go to Bath or go somewhere and, and the sacred water would cure them. And there is another god um, called Okeanus. Um, right in the middle. Uh, this is him right in the middle of this amazing silver dish that was found. Let's look at him. And he's, it's speculated his name is Okeanus, but actually, if you look at him carefully, he is the green man. And he, he's got some fishes popping out of him, <laughs> as you see. So the fish is actually in his image. So if you wanted to draw a, a, a quick version of Okeanus, the god of water, the god of the ocean, if that is who this is, I don't think it's Oceanus, I think it's someone else, we're going to see who. You would actually draw a fish because there's fish as part of his image. Here there's dolphins. And he looks like the sun. He's got fiery hair, like Apollo. And here he's got green leaves. Now, if you're a god of the ocean, maybe it's seaweed, but honestly, this looks like the leaves of the land. This is the green man, the fish god. So let's keep going. Let's have a look. So they say that they say that's Oceanus. They think it's Oceanus because there is Oceanus in Italy, and he looks um, similar. He looks um, kind of similar. Well, he's got a pair of horns here. He's got, uh, but, but he's a bit different as well. There's no leaves. He's a, he's different to that god I've just shown you, because I think that god is someone called Granus, from which the word grand is uh, comes from, and this is uh, the, the grand one. So basically, it says here it's a Celtic deity of classical antiquity, and he's associated with spas, thermal springs, and the sun. Bushy hair, eyebrows, beard, having a connection with the concept of shining, gleaming. Identified with Apollo as Apollo Granus. And suddenly we know Jesus is a type of Apollo. And boom, we have a, we have a connection between the water god and Apollo, the sun god. And it's very interesting because this was a god of healing. This was a, a god associated with the water, with the healing spas. A famous cult center was Aqua Granny in Ar now Aachen. So Charlemagne ch chose Aachen as a capital because it was it was a healing center. Aqua Granny. Um, Towns hot springs, forty five to seventy five degrees. Well, that's probably why he chose he chose Aachen as well because it's nice and warm. <laughs> so it's heating, natural heating. Caracalla went there. Um, physical and mental illness. Visited the God's shrine. Votive offerings. And in ancient Europe, this 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 is this is how this is how you healed, and Jesus is a healing God. So boom, he's a water God. He comes out of the water, and uh, a votive off uh, altar at Astorga invokes him after Holy Serapis and many named Isis. So he's related to Isis as well, and we'll see that. So. I was what started me on this today is I was looking up Sir Kai, Sir Guy, and in the Welsh literature, um, he's actually a fish god because nine nights and nine days his breath lasted underwater. Um, 
A wound from Sir Guy's sword no physician might heal. When it pleased him, he would be as tall as the tallest tree in a forest. When the rain was heaviest, wherever he held his hand, it would be dry for a handbreadth before and behind because of the greatness of the heat, and when his companions were coldest, he would be as fuel to them for fire. So he's practicing Qigong, and actually heat comes out of his hands. But the other thing that's not written here is that he actually rode around on a salmon. He was a kind of fish river god, or mixed up with this fish river god. So there was an idea of a fish river god in ancient Britain, in ancient Europe. We know at Stonehenge, um, you splash water on the rocks and healing water bounced off it and you could use that to heal yourself. And in a previous video, we've shown that Jesus uh, basically, the, the, the Catholic version of Jesus is the Celtic version of, 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 of a sacrifice to the Father whose name is Isus or Yasa, because look at the stations of the cross on this website called catholic.org. Uh, Jesus is, they, they literally worship the execution. Jesus is, con and I always thought this was really weird. Jesus is condemned to death, carries the cross, meets his mother, Jesus falls, si Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. Uh, Jesus uh, meets women of Jerusalem, he falls again, his clothes are taken away, they wash him, he's laid on the tomb, it goes on and on and on. And uh, what's all this about? And the answer is that in the Celtic religion, they uh, select a criminal every year, uh, same as in the New Testament. They, they get three criminals and they um, probably one for, for each aspect of the triple God. And uh, this might not be something that the Jews did. It might be something the Europeans did. And that's why they put it in the Bible to, get, to sell this religion to the Europeans to win converts. Um, we know that they... That uh, Christians always want to convert people, and th th that's just that's just a fact of life. And when we look at this, we see quite clearly uh, a relic of the ancient ritual in which a criminal was uh, nailed to a tree and flogged to death, basically, for the god Isus. There's more. So Oani, Oani, Anna. Uh, Johanna, John, John is a version of Oana, uh, John the Baptist maybe, an amphibian being who taught mankind wisdom. Oanas is described by the Babylonian god priest Barosus, had the form of a fish, with the head of a man under his fish's head, and under his fish's tail the feet of a man. In the daytime he came up to the seashore of the Persian Gulf and instructed mankind in writing the arts and sciences. Oanas was probably the emissary of Ea, god of the freshwater deep end of wisdom. And this relates to Jesus coming up out of the water, as is written in Matthew. And of course, ancient people would have had memories of ancient times. All these are the Apkalu, who are the fish gods of the world. And if you click one of them, the reign of Ailu, the king was sage. And you look at when he reigned, it was 5,400 BC, and these are fish gods. Um, kingship descending from heaven. Um, this is like the old religion. Jesus is like the old religion coming back. Or this prophet who became Jesus. He was, in a way, championing the older religion. And this is why he was a threat to the new order. The temple worshippers in Judea. Um, Dagon, the water gods. Um, it, it goes on and on. This was worshipped in the region where uh, Jesus uh, existed. Um, uh, basically in, um, in Iraq as well as in Syria. And this is the Temple of Isis in Pompeii. And the page Yasser.org actually does suggest that uh, Yasser, the East European version of Isis, it does actually suggest that um, Isis is a European form of this pre-god uh, pre which uh, has the same name as Jesus. And I think that's quite likely to be true. And this article says that the Isis religion was brought from Egypt. But that is, um, and it says there are Egyptian-like columns here which show that. But I don't think that is wholly the case. And to me, this is an early Christian church because look, at this there, there is a baptismal here for doing baptisms, uh, which I find quite interesting. And this is the Temple of Isis as it was found. Uh, it was found actually more than 100 years before this. So... But this is one of the earliest photos showing how it was at the time, and I'm sure there's a, a lot is, has gone missing since then. But why would you worship an Egyptian god if you were living in ancient Rome, unless uh, this was also a European god? And it definitely was. The Celts did worship Isis. 
so um, and, and I find very little Egyptian here to be honest and guess what Isis um, yeah um, initiates of the Isis mystery cult worshipped a compassionate goddess who promised eventual salvation ah. and a perpetual relationship throughout life and after death yeah that sounds like Christianity and if you look at what this Isis looks like it's basically Mary it says Isis but it is Mary I'm not sure how old this statue is. It says a Greco-Roman depiction, so I guess it's an ancient statue, but that is Mary. <laughs> clearly, clearly Mary, wearing a, have it with a pitcher, a water goddess. And if you look up more information about this, it says she became a patron goddess of the sea, a protector of people traveling by sea. One of her major temples was on the island of Philae. In Rome, Isis was introduced as a replacement deity for Venus after the death of Kaiser. Look, that, that, that's not necessarily the case. We have so little information from ancient Rome. We don't know if that is real. But it says here, and was looked to for guidance. Among the Greeks and Romans, she was known as Isis because the Egyptian word for throne relates to Isis in Greek. Isis is most associated with... Well, we know that there's a god called Isis in Europe, so forget that rubbish explanation. Isis is most, most associated with fertility and motherhood and was looked to as the ideal image of a queen, a wife and mother, but is also known for powers in healing and magic. A fertility deity looked up to by women and look, 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 a god for everyone, just like the Christians. She was the friend of slaves, sinners, artisans, the downtrodden, who was listened, uh, and also listened to the prayers of the wealthy maidens, aristocrats and rulers. Devotion to Isis was also intimately coupled with the acquisition of knowledge, considered an endowment of the gods. And it goes on. And one of the other reasons I mention Isis is these fish symbols, before they are found, and I forgot to tell you this, before they are found in Christian iconography, they are found among the Isis worshippers, the Isis worshippers. So this is actually a continuation of the Isis religion as worshipping a, a, which is the Essus religion, the god Essus. Okay, and this is the Celtic god, the Celtic deity Essus, uh, found, or, or Germanic deity, found all over Europe, called Yasa in the east, in Eastern Europe, in Central Europe, until the Middle Ages when uh, everyone was converted over there. And they said, forget about this Yasser rubbish, we're worshipping Jesus now. Uh, yeah, okay, so there we go. And I hope you've enjoyed that video. Clearly, I, I think, I think. look, there's, there's a lot to this. I think early Christians themselves didn't even know why they were doing this, writing this symbol, because their ancestors did because they were actually venerating a fish deity and, and there is so much uh, about um, uh, Jesus walking on water, um, which which is in turn acting kind of like a fish, surviving in a storm, bringing the ship to shore safely. Um, he is fish-like and there is some fish iconography in there in the New Testament. Fish God iconography. There we go. Thank you.